I'm talking about everyone's most favorite subject, shame. No, that's what everybody tries to avoid, but I actually think it's probably one of the most common emotions in the world today, and that is why it's so, so, so important to run after it. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and God came, they, they sinned, they realized they were naked, they covered themselves, and they hid. And then God walked into the garden, he said, where are you? What happened? And Adam comes out and he says, I realized I was naked, and so I hid. Now the reason that that matters is, he could have said, I ate from the tree you told me not to, and so I hid. But instead of saying the action he did wrong, he said he realized there was something wrong with himself. And that is what shame is. That's the definition. Instead of I did something bad, it is I am something bad. Instead of uh, I, I thought something bad, it is the core of who I am is bad. So like a great example would be like a guy who's struggling with porn would be I am a pervert instead of I struggled with porn versus um, I struggled with porn, but I'm not a pervert. And so the difference is how you identify yourself. If you identify yourself by a behavior, you will end up wanting to hide from God, from people, from connection. The reason this is so important is love actually changes us the most. It, the Bible says we love God because he first loved us. And so um, we actually have to let him love us radically. His love is what evokes us to love him back. And um, what I've noticed is what shame does is it makes us want to hide. It makes us want to cover up the things that we don't think are going to be lovable. Um, the problem is, so what I've seen is, I remember my husband, when I got married to him, he had this area that he thought was unlovable and um, he didn't feel like he had fully explained it to me. Now, I we had communicated about it, but he was just sure that like I didn't fully get it. So every time I told him that I loved him, he thought in his mind, yeah, but you, you wouldn't really love this part. And what I've seen is that shame creates secrets in people's lives. And so no matter how much people are loving you, you will hear that thing in the back of your head, yeah, but you don't actually know about this thing or you don't actually know about this thing that I did. And so what it does is every time somebody wants to love you, it's like a wall that comes up. And so it blocks the love that people want to give you. So the first thing I say about getting rid of shame is go on an anti-shame campaign. Anything that you are afraid people will not love you for, you need to get into the light. Whatever you expose into the light can be healed. The Bible says confess your sins to one another so that you may be healed. And it doesn't just mean sins. It's not just like I did something horrible. It could be something like I thought this, I was jealous of that girl who walked by. Like that's just not a pretty emotion. But if you confess it and get it out into the light, it actually can set you free. Now, I wouldn't tell all of your stuff to every single person who walks by, but the goal is that you are actually known enough that people's love and connection to you can set you free. Because what shame does is it makes things super high stakes. You believe that whatever mistake you have made will ruin everything and no one will love you and that no one has ever experienced the same thing you have. I know that every area that I've had shame, one of the main lies is, oh, no one else has done this or no one else feels this way or no one else has experienced that. And, and that's the nature of shame. It wants to isolate us. And so most of the time when I get it into the light, the number one thing people say is like, oh my gosh, oh yeah, I've struggled with that or I've done that too. Shame wants to keep us, what happens is it'll keep you in the cycle. If you start to believe, so like, let's say that you struggle with masturbation and you decide that you're a pervert, then you start to believe that you're a pervert, you are much more likely to follow your beliefs of what you believe you are. So it's really important to get rid of shame because shame will actually drive us towards the very thing that we don't want to become. I remember my husband, my husband has a much different sexual history than me. Um, from the time he was young to older, he has experienced a lot more and there's not even time in this to go into his testimony. But I will say that he had a lot of things he went through and I had not a lot of things that I went through before I got married. But he didn't allow shame to block him. He actually took his sexuality to the Lord and he said, okay, God, I want you to redeem this. I want you to heal this. Give me a revelation of, of your goodness in this. And one of the things he did is he went and talked to all of the people that he had had, um, that he had made mistakes with and he repented to them because that was part of getting free from shame for him. And, and for me, when we got married, he led me and brought me into a revelation of what healthy sexuality looks like 
because he had so spent time getting with the heart of God in it. And so I would just like to say to you, it doesn't matter what you have done or what your history is. My husband has actually taught me more about godly sexuality than any other person. And he has a much messier past. So whatever it is that you think that can hold you back, it actually can't hold you back. So what I would tell you to do, if you have shame in any area, if there's anything in your heart that you're like, if people knew this about me, they wouldn't like it. Go find your best friend, find a spiritual parent or your parent and tell them and let them help invite love into your life.